Hi, my name is Hannah Smolich, and this is the Started in Stanford podcast. I interview the entrepreneurs of Stanford to find out a little bit more about what they do and why. Today, we have David Noble with us. How are you? Very good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about what the University of Connecticut Worth Institute is about? Yeah, so so the, the Worth Institute is a relatively new uh, institute. Uh, we were founded in 2017, 2018, uh, and I was the inaugural director. It's a university level approach to entrepreneurship. So it's a little bit different. It doesn't sit in the school of business or in any particular location. Uh, what we do is we help organize and uh, encourage and support you know, uh, entrepreneurial programs across the entire university. Okay, so does that apply to stores as well? or? Yep, so my main office is in stores. I have one in Stanford and, and then uh, Connecticut Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation is in Hartford. And we utilize their, their office when, when we're in Hartford or uh, if we want to run classes or programming. Um, I think the big difference uh, between the Worth Institute and all of the other programs is that the Worth Institute is designed to help students achieve their goals, uh, utilizing entrepreneurship to do so. So they may not want to be a founder, but they may want to learn about entrepreneurship while mm -hmm. they're in school. And so we just have a bit more freedom with our mission. Uh, to be able to deliver these type of opportunities for students. Okay, because I'm sure, I mean, I know as a student yourself, you always kind of want to eventually work for yourself, but, you know, you need the education first. Yeah, and a lot of programs are designed uh, to help people found companies and be CEOs. Mm -hmm. And the reality is to go from uh, zero uh, sales to a million 200 million, a billion, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to need to have a team and you're going to have to grow it. And so, you know, there's lots of opportunities for the number two, number three, number four, number five person in the team. And that's a unique position compared to just going and interviewing for a Fortune 500 job, right? With the leadership development yeah. program or something. So, you know, we just take a bigger picture on it and maybe a more holistic view. I think that's sort of our okay. hallmark. Okay. So what do you do as director of the Institute? You kind of explained the mission before, but for you specifically, are you in, do you have to change locations or? Yeah. So I, I, I'm everywhere uh, at all times. Right. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's a challenge. Uh, that's, a, that's tough. So I may be meeting with the president of the university uh, or a major donor one day or one hour. Mm -hmm. And then the next hour I'm talking to a student uh, about a company that they want to create. And then the next hour I'm picking up pizza off the ground at an event. Right. And uh, you know, it's just any single day. It's, it's like being an entrepreneur because you have no idea what every single day is going to bring to you. Yeah, of course. Definitely a lot of, I'm sure you need the donors, the students, there's two sides to it. Yeah, there's, there's a multitude of sides. So also, you know, all of our government agencies, uh, you know, entrepreneurial engagement, uh, working with some of the same people you've, you've been interviewing for this podcast. And, and actually, you know, I know Nick from my work as the director of the Institute, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a whole, whole set of activities that we have to I have to perform uh, and then I have an office uh, that that runs a number of uh, interesting uh, activities as well that's great how do you what type of resources do you offer to really help students innovate is there anything yeah I mean, especially with technology I'm sure students don't have access to a lot on their own yeah, I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm always uh, amazed at the resourcefulness of students right um, and they teach me about stuff regularly. Um, you know, so the, the university had always sort of focused on that ideation stage of entrepreneurship. Okay. And so we've come in and we've said, you know, it's not just about creating companies. It's about how you view the world, how you approach okay. problems, all these things. So we run uh, or help run and support workshops, hackathons, et cetera, 
Uh, this fall, our, we're in pilot and beta right now with a large program called Networks, uh, N-E-T-W-E-R-X, right? And Networks is really about helping students from the time they first come to UConn uh, until, you know, forever actually, uh, all through their alumni years in mm -hmm. creating meaningful relationships with other students and alumni at UConn interested in technology, innovation, entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. finance, right? Um, so, you know, that, that's a great way to get involved, uh, through our, through our, our mentoring program. Uh, okay. it, it, there's no requirements for it. You don't even have to want to start a company. It's a couple hours of meeting one-on-one -on -one with an alumni. And so, you know, escalation of commitment is kind of my, my hallmark. Like we try to get you in the door, yeah. learn about you and then help you achieve your goals. Have there been any road bumps with COVID? Yeah, so COVID's definitely an interesting component. Uh, networks was uh, uh, coincidentally designed to be uh, designed to be digital and designed to be done through a, a, a Zoom or Google Meetup platform because mm -hmm. we wanted to leverage our out-of-state alumni as well as our in-state alumni with our students. So we had designed that particular piece. Uh, as digital and so it accelerated really quickly with COVID. Whereas most of our um, in-person meetings have either have to transform, transform to digital mm -hmm. or we had to come up with things like we've been having these coffee chats, uh, worth coffee chats with alumni entrepreneurs and eight or 10 students. So yeah, COVID has is, is been really in some ways an accelerant to what we're trying to do. And in other ways, it sort of slows us down and that we can't get people in a room and, and start building stuff. Yeah, I feel like the connections you make in person can be different, but that, that way everyone has access to the same type of program. Well, what's amazing is, it, you know, COVID has allowed us to use digital platforms like this to, yeah. in a way, because everybody, everybody, became a user, right? The entirety, every student, everybody, all the way up to grandparents of students. So the, the technical hurdle to do that disappeared in March. And that's why I think the uptake of that program has been so quick. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we need to get better at delivering engaging content for sure. Um, you know, I think of, we got to get better at finding ways to, um, you know, deliver what comes from that face-to-face -face meeting in the digital medium. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, of course. Um, but hopefully there's some good that comes out of it and hopefully it'll be over soon. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, I think you'll see uh, also a lot of startups uh, being created during this time where people have more reflection time than normal. Um, oh, definitely. So Right, students that uh, maybe their internship program disappeared, maybe they refilled that internship, but now all of a sudden they, they are able to view the world as, as risky as it is, you know, as a startup, right? So going to a job, there's no guarantee your job will be there tomorrow, uh, just as, oh, well, my company may go out of business if I start one. Yeah, that, that's true on both sides of the equation. So I, I think there's yeah. gonna be a lot of startup activity coming out of this. That's great. And for students in Stanford specifically, um, how successful have they been with their startup ventures or have you seen a lot of success stories there? So uh, at the undergraduate level, less, less so. Uh, at the graduate level, more so. And okay. you know, I think um, what we see is uh, Stanford is the most logical home for a UConn student to move to uh, unless they're in the biotech space when they're starting a company. Um, New Haven, Stanford, the train, the train station uh, into New York City is a, is a huge asset, right? So Stanford being located between those two locations is, is really quite good. Um, our PMBA program has driven uh, a good number of startups into the, in, into the space. Uh, and then, you know, you look around Stanford, you see Junk Luggers, which is, you know, mm -hmm. founded by a UConn student. You got um, uh, 
uh, uh, half, half full brewery, right? He's a UConn student, uh, and so on and so forth. There, there are a good number of UConn al alum here. So, um, yeah, we'd like to see over the next five years a rapid growth inside of the undergraduate community in Stanford. So this year we had our first Worth Innovator, uh, a student in the DMD program who, who was able mm -hmm. to receive that scholarship. She'll go to Silicon Valley with us and have access to a, a larger group of mentors. Um, and my office will also be here. And uh, there's Tip Digital, which is coming into the space and which will create even more activity. That's so I, th I think that starts in August uh, this year. So we're gonna see an uptick um, in activity. Uh, and then of course the dorms and the residential community that's developing now becomes uh, the, the precursor to what we need to effectively drive this programming. Yeah, to have students really immerse themselves in the Stanford community. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're here, living here, doing this, not trying to drive home, trying to catch yeah. a train, it's much easier to sit down and work with somebody for two hours uh, every day, right? And yeah. and make progress, and then uh, then all of a sudden that two hours becomes three hours, and that three hours becomes eight and and ten, and so. So yeah, that, that process becomes uh, part of that. I've also received a grant, which is very uh, exciting, where mm -hmm. we're gonna start looking into a cooperative education program around entrepreneurship that would be located here in Stanford. Oh, that's and great. Th those would be students that take a semester or a year off to really um, work through and validate um, you know, a, a data science uh, startups, startups relying with heavy elements of data science and machine learning and, uh, um, you know, internet of things, those type of activities. Oh, that's amazing. So would students be getting paid or are they just? Yeah, they would be jobs. And okay. so uh, we have not hammered out the exact specifics of how it's going to work, uh, but, but I've got a year. Uh, well, maybe eight months or something to get it real, really tight and into place and, and look at it. Uh, we believe this will be one of the, one of just a unique asset, right? Um, not many universities have this sort of approach to it. And it, it, it came from studying uh, what students are really, really good at and what they're not good at. And then, you know, are we able to build up the pieces that augment that so that the startups are successful. Um, you know, it, it's just uh, uh, a new uh, take on this. We suspect yeah. there'll be high demand for it. Um, you know, we'll open it up to every student at UConn to be able to come and do this to, in Stanford. We think there'll be high demand, um, especially since, you know, when you start to tell in an interview or even if you don't, yeah. uh, you know, go on with the startup, this is what I did for a year and, the, and this is what I can do with data and this is how I, you know, interpret it on the business side or, and, uh, you know, it, it just sort of cements all of those skills into the, the a dynamic worker. Definitely. Yeah. So it seems like the Worth Institute is really expanding quickly and finding, you know, different ways to help students who are interested in entrepreneurship or have always wanted to be their own boss, which is great. It sounds amazing. I've only been a student for a year, so I haven't heard a ton about it. So it's great to learn about it. Yeah. So every year you'll hear more for the rest yep. of your time here. That's, <laughs> yep, that's my yeah. goal. That's, so that's you awesome. want to know what the, you want to know what the director of the Worth Institute is supposed to do? That's <laughs> what they're supposed to do. Every exactly. year you'll hear more. Perfect. Well, yeah. I can't wait because I'm I've always been very interested in entrepreneurship and very involved in the community at Stanford. It's kind of always been an interest of mine, but for any student, I think that starting your own business, that's a huge step to take when you're already at the financial state of paying for college. Absolutely. That's why I think, you know, it needs to be more than just create a company, right? I mean, there, the, I, I believe it's a long tail. Uh, basically, the work that we do now uh, will pay off for students seven years from now, seven, ten years down the road. We'll see, um, you know, so to go back to your question of have people been successful, uh, yeah. the, I wouldn't measure on the short run. I measure on the long run. So can we create this set of opportunities that allow a student 
when they're ready to start a business, whether that's financial, family, uh, geography, uh, knowledge, and when they're ready to start a business, are they positioned to successfully start a business? Exactly. Hopefully I'll be one of them. <laughs> yeah. I, well, we hope to see you uh, all through the fall. Oh, definitely. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Absolutely. My pleasure. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you again. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the chance to talk. Of course.